And I call the member for Holt. Thanks, Deputy Speaker. Well, tonight I rise to speak to the member for Fisher's motion on the growing threat posed by cybercrime, cyber scams and cyber terrorism. Uh, I obviously wish to start by commending the work of ID Care, which is the Australian and New Zealand's national identity and cyber support service. In 2019, ID Care will provide support to over 50,000 Australians and New Zealanders who have experienced identity takeover, cybercrime scam and cyberbullying. In fact, and just on the note about identity crime, in December last year, the Australian Institute of Criminology published their reports on the impact of identity crime, revealing that the total annual cost to the economy was $2.65 billion. Narrowing it down to my area, local residents in my electorate of Holt experience cybercrime. As an example, a constituent may receive a call from a person or entity purporting to be from a government service like the Australian Taxation Office, or from Medicare, or from people pretending to be from a bank, or simply uh, as they experience a cybercrime by wrongly responding to an email. As an example, earlier this month I was dealing with a constituent who had suffered from an ATO scam. They had received, I think it was a text or an email, and they had responded to it. And, but they felt, when it was explained to them that it was a scam, very humiliated for making a mistake when responding to an email. This is a very, very common occurrence. It happens from young people that serve me coffee that ask me to things in the morning to the people that assist us in our, our lives in different areas. It also can be challenging, Deputy Speaker, for people from migrant backgrounds, in particular when, when experiencing a cybercrime. Having a service such as ID Care that can be referred to via the internet is a great resource and, and a social proofing exercise. And I'd like to basically support the service to, and, and, and support its aim of providing critical support to people confronting identity and cyber security concerns. Australians really are. The internet is a great connector. It's a great economic tool. It's a great communication tool. But the downside of that tool is that many Australians are suffering from identity theft, internet banking fraud, tax fraud, travel fraud, relationship fraud and other cyber crimes like extortion. I'd also wish to thank, whilst I have this opportunity, to congratulate the work, I should say, of the Australian Federal Police in responding and assisting people suffering from cybercrime. The AFP always recommends that if someone suffers from an online crime or fraud, it should be re it, the re incident should be reported to the Australian Cybercrime Online Reporting Network and to the Australian Cyber Security Centre, and that's important to people that might be listening to this broadcast, wondering what to do. The AFP and others also recommend that people regularly check the Australian Cyber Security website because it gives you and provides useful information on how to better secure yourself or your business online. The internet, our computers, smartphones and other devices are crucial to our way of life, but it is important that in people continue to feel safe using these devices and tools and not to have to endure the cost of cybercrime. As Deputy Chair of the Parliamentary Joint Committee on Intelligence and Security, we recognise, I see I'm, and I'm briefed about cybercrime and cyber terrorism and cyber espionage. It's an ongoing challenge. As well as the misuse of people's data by tech companies, cyber terrorism and, as I've said, state-sponsored cyber terrorism. One thing to point out, our security services regularly provide advice to the public about electronic advice that would constitute cyber hygiene such as encouraging Australians to regularly update their software and devices, have strong passwords, have two-factor authentications, and to exercise the same judgments we do in every day online. An everyday example that's been provided to me by the head of a security service is this. Think about it in terms of using electronic devices. Everyday life examples would be that we wouldn't give our bank account details or passwords to a complete stranger, so why would we be giving it to a complete stranger online. If the offer online is too good to be true, then it's not safe. And it's interesting as I continue in terms of data, talking about the large social media companies and, and about the value of data. There's a program on Netflix that's called The Great Hack. It refers, in, in 2017, it basically details that data was to have proclaimed to have surpassed oil as the world's most valuable asset and what that means, of course, as the world's most valuable asset, it is going to be targeted by people seeking to access that asset through means fair or foul. 
And uh, that's why I'm, I'm happy to speak to this motion. It is something that people need to be aware of. Its information is stored, but it is vulnerable, and we should continue to support government's efforts to keep people safe. I thank the member for Holt.